This video is shot on the DJI Osmo Action 4. It seems like with this camera, DJI have taken the competitor, the GoPro Hero 11 Black, and said, at every single component, how can we make this better? I thought it would be dramatic if I walked off, but I actually need the camera. Now let's start with the price. This camera comes in at $399, which will be probably around £399 in the UK. Pretty good for a camera with this capability. Especially when you consider that the competitors are likely to be around one and a half times more. Let's head to the studio and I'll tell you about the design. If you've seen the DJI Osmo Action 3, the Action 4 looks pretty much the same. The actual lens itself looks less garish and Cyclops-like. It certainly looks less obvious on the Action 4. One of my favorite things is the front touch screen, which is really helpful if you're shooting in like a selfie angle and you can just quickly change some settings like the resolution or the magnification. And on the back, you've got a full touch screen as well. It's pretty compact, which you'd expect from an action camera and certainly is enough to slip into your pocket for an evening of activities. Evening of activities, that sounds so formal, doesn't it? In terms of the other specs, it has got a one over 1.3 inch sensor, which means that it's an improved sensor size. It's got 10-bit color and this new D-Log M color performance, which I've not managed to try out yet. Apparently it's deep freeze resistant, which is great for all of those times you intend to put it in your freezer. And of course it is waterproof up to 18 meters, which I believe uh, this one, the old one was waterproof up to 16 meters. So in that two meter depth, you could probably save yourself with this new camera. It can shoot 4K in 120 frames per second, so you're gonna get those super slow-mo shots to look really, really crisp. And my favorite part of all of this is the magnetic locking system. So they had this on the old one, the Action 3. They have this in the Action 4 as well, is that it is cumbersome to have to screw in something to an action camera. It, it kills the joy of, oh, quickly grab the camera and let's shoot this. Whereas this, it, magnetically attaches onto things. And to release it, I am quickly releasing it. So I can put it down and do a time-lapse. I can pick it up and take it and walk around with it. I can attach it to things so quickly. The most important thing about all of these cameras is the image quality. Because ultimately, the, all the fancy bells and whistles are useless if you are not getting good video. I'll let you judge for yourselves what you think about the video from this camera. I'm currently shooting this at 4K in 30 frames per second. This is what it looks like with the ND filter on. I've currently got it on. This is what it looks like with it off. I think I prefer it with it on. It just makes the colors look a little bit more natural. So I'm gonna do the rest of the tests with the ND filter on. I'm gonna take a little video here to show you how much I'm moving this camera. That was what it looks like. And that's what the camera is doing. This is now shooting at 4K in 30 frames per second, but in the 4x3. The 4x3 is really helpful, as you've probably seen in my other videos, because you can crop it as both landscape and portraits. You can crop it for YouTube, or you can crop it for TikTok as well. That is a very nice car. It's like when you've got the inbuilt camera stabilization completely off. There's no stabilization at all now in this video. We've got the first level of stabilization, which is called rock steady. This is what that rock steady looks like. You can already tell that it's made a difference to the stabilization. Finally, this is Rocksteady Plus, which is the second level of stabilization, the one before the horizon balancing. There's a slow-mo setting on the camera, which is what I'm using at the moment. So we can slow this down. I don't know why I tried to slow it down. The thing about the slow-mo is all it's doing is it's putting it into 4K at 120 frames per second if you're shooting at 4K, which is a setting you can do yourself, but having a setting for it makes it really accessible. These are action cameras, meaning that you put them on a bike, you put them on a diving helmet, and a diving helmet? As if, as if you wear a helmet when you're diving. Meaning yes, you put them on a bike, you run around with them and play sports. But one of the main things for me is actually what is the audio quality like? I will use this for mainly vlogging for holidays. I wanna let you be the judge of that. What do you think the audio quality is like of this camera? Bear in mind, I'm on a windy rooftop with noise of traffic underneath. Can you hear me clearly? And do you think it's good enough? Now, this is an audio test that is probably a little bit fairer in that we're inside and there's not noise of traffic around us, but this is probably less real-worldy. What do you think of this sound compared to the other one? 
Battery life is one of the most important things when it comes to these cameras, as well as reliability. You don't want to be out somewhere and to be wanting to shoot something, but you can't because the camera's dead or it's not responding to when you're pressing it. Because the Osmo Action 4 has only just come out, I can't give a real full opinion about the battery life. When I've used it, it seems to have worked okay, but I haven't had a noticeable difference compared to the previous cameras. But certainly the reliability is one of the things that always sways me towards DJI. I know with a GoPro, I am sometimes scared to turn it on because I think it's not gonna respond to my buttons or that it's all of a sudden not gonna be working or it's gonna be freezing. I don't seem to have that problem with these cameras and that goes for the Action 4 as well. And I think the reliability of this camera is one of the things that I've been really impressed with with DJI in general. I own and pay for DJI drones. I have the Osmo Action 3. I have now the Osmo Action 4 and they all are reliable devices from a reliable brand. Before we wrap this up, I wanna hit you with some comparisons. The cameras just come out and these are very technical stats. So I'm gonna tell them to you. If it looks like I'm reading, that's because I am reading. Uh, the Osmo Action 4 has a one over 1 1.3 inch sensor. The GoPro a one over 1 1.7 inch sensor. So Osmo Action 4 has a better sensor. They both have 10 bit color, but the Osmo Action 4 compared to the GoPro Hero 11 Black has it in all aspect ratios with the GoPro only has it in certain aspect ratios. The field of view for the Osmo Action 4 is 155 degrees, whereas in the GoPro it's 148 degrees. Can you see how they've taken every little piece of the GoPro and thought, how can we make this a little bit better. The lowest operating temperature is minus 20 degrees, whereas on the GoPro, it's minus 10 degrees. The max battery life is 160 minutes. On the GoPro, it's 120 minutes. It's waterproof up to 18 meters, whereas the GoPro is waterproof up to 10 meters. The fast record, when you press record really quickly, you'll get there in 2.5 seconds, whereas in the GoPro, you'll get there in three seconds. The fast charging is 50 minutes, whereas the GoPro is gonna take two or three hours, and the price of this is even cheaper. Now here's the question, would I buy one of these? I think if you already have the model before, you have the Action 3, or you have an equivalent GoPro model, like the GoPro Hero 11 or the GoPro Hero 10 Black, you probably don't need the upgrade. The amount extra you're getting in this camera, I don't think is enough to justify buying a whole new camera. If you are a couple of models behind or you don't have an action camera, then I think this is definitely the option that I was going for. If I was buying one brand new and didn't have an action camera and I was choosing one today, I would get this for three main reasons. Number one, the reliability. The fact that I know that I'm gonna press a button and it's actually gonna do what I want it to do. Number two, accessibility. The menus are really user-friendly. It's incredibly quick to change different camera settings and you're getting really good image quality from it. And number three is just the fact that you can attach it and detach it so easily. I couldn't do it because I was looking at the camera so easily. It just means the possibilities are endless when it comes to accessories and attaching and reattaching to things. It just doesn't feel cumbersome. This camera has just come out. I'm gonna spend some more time with it. And once I have done, I will let you guys know my further thoughts. If I have any updates to what I'm thinking, some opinions about the battery life, reliability, and also the camera quality as well. If you enjoy this sort of thing, tech reviews in general, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. This is a relatively new channel and it really helps me out. It means that people send me stuff like this. So really, really grateful for you if you watch the videos. Take care guys and I'll see you in the next one. That's my washing machine that has just finished. It's the review.